Well, okay, this will be the first in a series of videos uh, exploring the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game playtest rulebook. Now, on the off chance that someone here on the design team might actually watch any of these videos, I'm going to have to disclaimer this. With all apologies here to Mike Caps, Matt Forbeck, and John Nee, uh, as I said in my first impressions video, the presentation of this book, uh, if this is an indication of uh, plans to do with the, with the actual core books and the supplements that go with it, is all great. Uh, you can't really think of a better way to like, you know, get across the comic book feel than to put it out in the same format as you do your trade paperbacks. That's nice. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about the setting presentation because uh, there's really little to nothing about that in here. This kind of assumes that if you're looking at it, you're already familiar uh, with, with the Marvel Universe in many ways. Uh, this is, you know, as it says, it's a playtest rulebook. This is pretty much just uh, the character creation rules and the combat rules. Uh, the combat rules... I guess everything is downwind of the character creation in this, and so really the best way to approach this... Oh yeah, I guess what was my disclaimer? Um, this might seem to be a bit harsh. If you are wanting honest opinions because you want to make an honestly good product out of this, uh, and I am not here to like hold your hand and tell you you did a good job, because um, you didn't. At least in terms of the rules design, this is clunky. Uh, I, I don't see this being appealing, especially to a younger players or new players uh, I, I, I it, the whole thing seems a little clunky um, to get this across best we're gonna go we're gonna look at the character sheet here um, the character sheet is the core interface that the player has with the game environment and so uh, you know the character sheet in a weird way is actually one of the most important things because you know uh, if you have a bunch of rules and other stuff that don't tree off of things that are available on the character sheet, and the players have no way to know that they're capable of interacting with them and stuff like that. Uh, this character sheet, from you know, looking at it, is both a combination of a bunch of wasted space, and the the parts that are like functional for rules are you know, perhaps a, a little overly complicated. I get it's cute and all that you want your ability scores to have initials that spell Marvel. Uh, but uh, might, agility, resilience, vigilance, ego, and logic. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's you can work with that fine. Okay. Um, the problem is, is like the, all these derivative scores and the, the amount of charts that you have to, to look through in the rule book uh, to figure things out, that's not good for on the fly play. Uh, you know, your ability score is your ability score, and then you have to add a defensive score, which is based on your character's archetype, and then your character's rank within that archetype to be able to derive a total defensive score. And then on the opposite side, you're supposed to do math the opposite way to get your uh, action modifier by doing the same thing, adding that ability score. Uh, the, the amount of points you get to buy your ability scores is based on your rank, uh, and the point buy is, is like it's, it's exponential increase of points instead of just, you know, a one-for-one one, uh, kind of dynamic, uh, you know, which is, like, it's workable, but, like, it's it's creating a bunch of unnecessary math, uh, which, like, you know, I don't know, I've, I've always found that a bit both unattractive for players, especially if they're new to the thing, throwing a whole bunch of calculations at them if they're not experienced role players um, is, is, you know, not necessarily the best way to convince them that this is something they want to spend their time doing. Um... Like the powers section, like period. There's things about the power tree. Uh, the stuff on here that's not immediately clear what's going on. If the player hasn't had a chance to read the rule book, not all players are gonna want to read the damn rule book. They gotta, you know, the rules have to kind of make sense and be conveyed to them on the fly. Uh, so like power set cost. You know what does that mean? Uh, what what you know having all these little es. MR next to everything like that's not immediately clear what the hell you're talking about here and uh, also like power range damage uh, special effects duration 
maybe like numbers of rounds needed to cast it for some things. You know, like a Storm can't uh, summon all kinds of weather instantaneously if she, you know, she can might be able to like make lightning, you know, strike as a, like a single combat round action, but if she wants to summon a hurricane, she's got to at least spend a few rounds concentrating and to get all that wind and storm to manifest, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, you know, so like, I don't know, I don't know if we need these little symbols to convey that though in the game. Like large chunks of wasted space, like you're, you're not going to have that many traits. Uh, equipment's just a bunch of lines, but there's like nothing, like there's nothing, no line on cost, nothing on weight. Uh, if your character has archetype is using like they're using power armor or, or that's their power set or whatever the hell it is. Uh, you know, there's like nothing on here about keeping like your stats for your battle suit. A big long section on personality. Not enough history, though, by comparison. Let's see. Over here by traits, you got code name, your archetype, and your rank. Your total health points. Apparently, you got to keep track of your karma. Uh, focus. Fight damage. Ranged damage. Okay. Is it, oh, yeah, because that's the damage you do. I guess it's reference right there. You have all these different kind of speed... Uh, uh, numbers you're, you're gonna have to calculate uh you have to keep track of an initiative modifier that i guess is all right up here your basic thing your occupation what teams your character is involved in their real name height weight gender eyes skin hair distinguishing features do they have a base their origin profession their size uh i don't know it's uh like i said it's it's not the best character sheet in the world it's not really, like I said, you know, it's not immediately clear on first analysis what some of these things are supposed to stand in for. Following it in this book, we got two pages as just a quick rules reference. So we can go over this together, guys. So they give you their basic rules for an action check, uh, which is the roll a D616, which uh, like, like having your ability scores spell out Marvel, it, it's pretty gimmicky there. Uh, what they're saying is you're supposed to have three die six, and one of them is a different color. So you'll have two die of one color, and then you you have a third color. This is your Marvel die. Now here's the problem with this. So you roll your uh, three six-sided dice, and then add them up, and then uh, you get to add whatever kind of ability uh, modifier or defense modifier, I guess, to that roll. And then beat a target number. The target number is determined by the challenge's rank. So, you know, it'll be a, you know, rank six gives you a 20. It's not immediately clear. I guess it all starts at 15 and just goes up by one. Yeah. Okay. No, they start to stagger at 23. So, yeah, it's not even immediately clear. You're going to, until you have it memorized, you're going to have to constantly flip to these tables while you're running things as a dungeon master. But anyway, so like the challenge is like say a five, and so that gives you a target by rank, gives you a uh, a nineteen as the difficulty number they need to beat with their three die six plus whatever they get for their ability modifiers. Now, uh, on top of that, though, you then give it a target number modifier by adjective based on whether it's a trivial, easy, up through ridiculous, and impossible. So you'll you'll add or subtract that to this to give the target number you want for this roll. Now here's where I think this is like bad design right here off the bat. In your basic most rolls, uh, the die is not the number it says it is in the roll. Uh, if you make a roll and it comes up like say like that, and lo and behold, I actually did roll a one, that's funny. Um, that one actually counts as a six, because that's a good thing if you roll a one on your Marvel die and these are not both ones. But, and so then you get, use that as a six and add that to the five and the two, and then add your ability score modifier to beat this target number that's based off the challenge rank and its adjective. Um, yeah, I, 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 hopefully uh, those of you watching who are familiar with role-playing games can already kind of start to see... Uh, the problems with this um and though if you roll your dice and everything comes up ones now that one is bad 
That means you botch the roll, automatic failure, no matter what, even if your bonuses of, you know, plus three would still beat the target number. Uh, and that's just a, kind of a dumb dynamic where your dice, one of your dice is not always going to be the number it says it is. And what happens if you, uh, you know, because it says like, you know, if, uh, you know, like the best roll you can get, let's see, fantastic roll. If you roll a one on the Marvel die and everything other than a pair of ones on the ordinary dice, that's a fantastic roll. Count the Marvel die as six and add the other two dice to to get your result. A roll of one on the Marvel die and a six on each of the ordinary dice makes for a fa ultimate fantastic roll of 18, the best possible roll. Which is true, but it's not the only way to get that because if you roll a six, that also gives you an 18, right? Uh, a botched roll is if you just roll all ones. So uh, the that's not that that's the same as rolling that. That's not the only way to get a score of eighteen. You can get a score of eighteen two different ways. Um, so that that's inaccurate in their own text. Uh, their sequence of combat's a little unclear. Uh, you determine the character's positions. Okay, roll initiative. Fine. S start a new round or I guess your first round. Uh, each character takes their turn in initiative order. Uh, no description on exactly what you're able to do on that turn. Do you just get one action? Do you get a move in an action? Do you get a certain amount of actions based on your rank? Do certain powers give you more actions? Uh, perhaps that's why it's unclear, but they, you know, they should spell it out a little bit here since this is supposed to be your ultimate rules reference for players and uh, first-time uh, DMs trying to run this thing. And if the combats are still able and want to fight, go back to step three after that. Uh, and otherwise the combat ends, okay. Uh, some notes on firearms about how they need to be reloaded. They're, what about laser weaponry? Uh, look, there's aliens and high-tech people in the Marvel Universe who have uh, energy weapons. So those, uh, I guess this is only for, you know, projectile firearms. Then there's a couple of charts of all the things you got to keep track of on the size of objects to give you characters can either get a damage modifier where they get to do more damage to the object because it's small, uh, but it's harder to attack it. Uh, while also there's modifiers based on the object size, uh, how sturdy it is can give it a health multiplier and damage resistance. Uh, they got the amount of damage it takes to bust through walls. I guess that's actually handy. It's the f most handy thing I've seen on this chart so far in terms of playing a superhero game. Uh, some com basic combat weapon stats, and that's it for their rules references. A couple of the things I wanted to point out in this rule book uh, that I consider to be problematic in terms of rules design. Uh, we got these power tree charts as to how to like sequence powers. Uh, this is, like, clunky, very clunky. Uh, once again, requires a lot of, like, having to go back to the book in the middle of play. The less you can do that in the middle of play, the better, you know, in most cases. Uh, I just, I don't like the layout of them, and, uh, it's, it's also not immediately clear. Like, not everything gets multiple has some things branch in different directions other things give, give you just a straight chain of stuff i don't know why some of that can't just be as you increase in rank you get better versions of just linear selections of powers perhaps there's there's multiple games that have tackled this subject uh successfully so you know this can be done uh this does not immediately strike me as the best of ways until i try to sit down and make a character later uh but yeah, this gives you your amount of power sets and then your total amount of powers, uh, which also to kind of just increases at these weird jumping exponential rates, which uh, doesn't automatically translate. So it forces you to have to go back to the rule book and look up a chart and cross-reference where your number is to actually see things. It's not something that's uh, intuitive and you can just kind of do in the fly in your head because it all kind of runs on the same dynamics. Uh, but here we go. When you get down to the, the core archetypes, which is like the main deciding factor of what kind of your character is, uh, less so than their power origin and stuff like that, it's their archetype uh, that they fulfill within a team is their main kind of thing. So we got the ones that are in this book, they say they might have more in the core rule book later. 
but they uh, start you off with Blaster, Bruiser, Genius, uh, Polymath, Protector, and Striker. Uh, right off the bat, once again, also, if this is a game that's supposed to at all appeal to the younger people out there in the world, uh, Polymath, <laughs> okay, uh, as you wish. The, the, the main problem here is, is uh, these charts. Uh, just the, that that's that's not attractive. That's not attractive at all. You have to constantly come back and look at these things or to just even for character creation This is not like I said you want something that's kind of more intuitive and in that um, things work in a common way for everyone uh, Like this is just this is just a mess You know, so you like your rank five so you get you know bonuses to your might and agility like, is it even clear what these things are, like, what's, why is there a plus and a, and a number going on here? That's not immediately clear. You get fight damage constantly going up, range damage going constantly up. So I guess it doesn't matter what kind of equipment you have. The character's type is what dictates what kind of damage they do with their attacks. Uh, I guess what their base health and focus comes from this. Uh, your rank caps, your height of your ability scores that you also have to buy with points. Uh, but you get to raise your ability caps depending on which archetype you use. That's clunky. Uh, like, you know, for pre-designed characters, this is probably better. Uh, if you just want to play Spider-Man or, or, you know, a, a generic established Marvel character and not make your own characters. But uh, just... The character creation of this is just unattractive. Uh, too much chart reference, and there's going to be having to be continuous going back to those charts and play in a lot of cases. Uh, and Because, and like I said, you want intuitive rules that once you understand what the basic dynamic is, you can easily improvise without having to, like, stop. Okay, everyone, pause what you're doing. Just keep what you're about to do in your heads while I take five minutes to thumb through this big, giant rule book and look around for the right page. And Okay, there's... Strikers, okay, and he's a what was this NP? He, he's rank seven, okay, and so this is this is his agility modifier, okay. I'm gonna roll the dice. Oh, but is that two actually a two? Uh, like uh, the, the whole this whole thing's like this is not great design, and I'm sorry to say that. Uh, the, in, the whole idea of buying a your playtest rule book and playing along with the idea of like you know giving y'all uh feedback is that, you know, it's like to make a better product. And, you know, there's there's potential here. Uh, like I said, the presentation's great. Uh, you know, that's established IP, people can get their heads around. It's a potential uh, product that'd be great as an introductory game uh, for, for new players who are younger and uh, maybe don't want to play Dungeons and Dragons or are more into Marvel and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it just, but these rules, man, uh, if. if it doesn't even matter if the, the combat rules are better than the character creation rules. Everything hinges off the character creation rules. And uh, they're up, they're, you know, kind of, a, a, is, a, is obtuse the right word? I'm not sure. And the character sheet is just unattractive. Uh, spreading out the powers, and it's like two, like, powers continued over here. Like, just keep them all lumped together, or perhaps you've got too many potential powers. They're a way to, like, streamline the power sets maybe and just focus on power set and rank as opposed to individual powers that tree off the power set possibly uh this is a little too much noise you got way too many fucking speed values going on here that you have to calculate uh a lot of wasted space not really enough information on equipment it's just blank lines you know like how much damage can your equipment take since you have all these charts to figure out, you know, object damage and damage resistance, and like, shouldn't your character's equipment have damage resistance and their own health stats and stuff? Uh, this, uh, I mean, it's not that much worse than things, you know, like D&D 3rd Edition had you do. Uh, it's a little gimmicky, but I mean, I can understand why you want to use your own branding and stuff to synergize the feel. Because as I said, that's part of the presentation, so I can be a bit more forgiving about that, even if vigilance, ego, and logic eh, as character-defining traits, like, are those the best ones to triangulate a character's personality and abilities off of? I don't know. Um, 
I don't know. But like I said, this is the character sheet is the character is the player's interface with the entire game. Everything about the game has to be conveyed through this character sheet. Uh, and I don't feel like that's going to be the case. Like, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, leave comments below about uh, particular subjects in the rule books that you want to have me uh, delve into, if possible. And I will try to address them as they come up. Stay waspinated.